So I can go in here, QuickBooks is quite forgiving uh, in this kind of thing. And I could go in and say, okay, I'm gonna change this to 16,000. And then that's what I would have to do if I was doing a bank reconciliation. I would have to change that in order for the bank reconciliation to work because that's the amount that I'm, I would imagine in that case cleared the bank. We'll talk more about this when we get to the bank reconciliation course or section. And then I could just, and, and, and also the other common error that you'll have, especially with a practice problem or anytime you're not entering data at the same point, meaning sometimes you, you enter your transactions real time as they happen. And sometimes you might uh, enter transactions periodically or possibly like at the end of the year, you're entering a full years of transactions, like from the bank statements or something like that. In that case, oftentimes you can have eight date issues because you're going to enter stuff on the wrong date, right? So, because it's not real time. Otherwise, if you're entering at real time, that happens less often because the date automatically populates to the current date. So if that's the case, then as you're doing the data input, when you see those date issues, as you're working through the practice problem, this is how you can kind of drill back down on the form, make the change. So we'll save it and close it. So if we've run into any problems during our data input, there's the change. We will do the same thing. And just, I just want to point out at the outset that if we make a mistake like that, it just looks like a mistake. It's not really a mistake. It's we did it on purpose because we're, that's a demonstration, uh, just tool that we use quite often. So in any case, there's the change. So now we're at the, the 98 thousand here. Let's